Okay, so that's that guy. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. A couple weeks ago, I was talking to Ashley Harwood. I'm gonna tag her channel in the description below. Go follow Ashley. Awesome content, she teaches wood turning. I mean, just go follow her account. Amazing, amazing work. When I was in eighth grade, I used to get dropped off to junior high school early in the morning. My wood shop teacher's name, no joke, Mr. Wood. <laughs> Wally Wood, literally that was his name. What a cool guy. He let me come into the wood shop before school started and I would just work on the lathe. You're probably wondering why did I become a framer? Well, I'm a framer now. Anyway, Ashley does wood turning. Excellent teacher, go follow her channel. But in the conversation, we were talking about, like what are some of those things that we just would have killed to have a video when we first started? So that's the genesis of this video. I have used a Swanson Speed Square. I mean, this since like, I used to go out for spring, spring break and work with the guys. 1992, eighth grade, something like that. Swanson Speed Square. This is, was just standard on our job sites. We only use Swanson. This is the newest Swanson Speed Square. It's upgraded with a few features that it did not have before. So I'm gonna show that. And then I have been using the Martinez Titanium Square for the last three years. I love this square. It is ungodly expensive. I'm gonna talk about that at the end. So you're gonna see throughout this, I'm gonna use both the Martinez and the Swanson. And then we have, I think this is the Johnson and this also is a Swanson, the big 12. We like to use these for laying out rafters. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you know, five quarter by 10 fascia, we use the bigger square. So I'm gonna have those kind of off to the side as we go. So here we go. I'm gonna show you just, well, let's, let's start at the super basic and we'll build off of that. Because it turns out that knowledge is a lot like a house. It starts with the foundation and then if the foundation's good, you build off of that. So that one's free of charge for you. By the way, these jackass sawhorses are the bee's knees. I'm gonna put a link to Ed, Edster on Instagram, Edster Jackass. He's the inventor and designer. We've been using them for about four or five years. Anyway, hey, that, hey Ed, that's a free plug for you. The Swanson Speed Square is totally worth buying just to get the little blue book. Uh, if you're new to like roof framing and things, this is kind of a, a nice primer. And then from there, go to the journalofightconstruction.com, jlconline.com, and finehomebuilding.com. And then there's a bunch of great guys and gals on Instagram that teach um, roof cutting as well. So anyway, I'm gonna, that's just for reading if you want. Okay, so let's go into some real basic stuff. First of all, I've got two two by fours. This is the heel of the rafter and it has a pivot point. Okay, for the rest of this video, I'm gonna wear the sweet GoPro because I want this view. I think it's gonna make explaining this a lot better. Anytime I talk to the camera, of course, you're looking at a chump with a GoPro growing out of his forehead. Okay, also I put in hearing protection. The reason for that is I'm gonna make a few cuts. I wear hearing protection full time. These are the Isotunes free. I'll put a coupon code down below. I've been wearing them and working with them. So full disclosure for, I don't know, the last three or four years. Love these things. Also means I can take phone calls. So anyway, let's get, let's get into it. So here's our two squares. Let's go over the basic features. This is the heel and it allows us to hold the square against the material. This heel has a level, which is actually quite useful. This one does not, it is not the end of the world, but it is nice to have that. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees. This angle is 45 degrees on both of them. Notice the length is a little different, but pretty much most squares are right at seven. The Martinez is just a little longer. And the reason for that, now you've got two two by fours. These are three and a half inches across the face, right? Three and a half, three and a half is seven, which means we can now mark across the face. Here's some other features of both squares. I have a ruler on this side of both. See that? So that means I can measure things like that. And then we essentially have a protractor. The 45 degree arm of both squares is laid out in degrees. So they're broken up. So five, let's see, let's go 30 degrees is there. 31, 32, 33, 34, and then 35, et cetera. Along this face is the common scale for rafters. So here in the US, we typically um, use roof pitch system. 
So if I go over 12 inches, which is our unit run, and I go up four inches, four inches, 12, there's the slope of our roof. So everything is in units of 12. So that's a 412 roof. You would see it on blueprints like that. Four inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. That's the common scale. So that's what your common rafters and your jack rafters are going to be at the ridge. If it's a hip, you use this scale. Will Holiday, for example, keeps a set of squares that are painted so that he never gets them confused. That's a good idea, I've done that. Because the unit, I'm not gonna get into this in detail, but I'll link to an article below. The unit run for a hip is 17 inches, technically 16.97 for the same four inches of travel, uh, uh, of vertical travel. So that means that coming from the corner, the hip has to travel 17 in order to make the same height as the common rafter. But I'll link to an article below. That's that scale on both of these. That's the basics of the square. You have some other things like a three and a half. Now, let me just show you a couple things too. Notice that on this square, that's, three, that's one half, that's three quarters, that's inch and a half. What that allows me to do is if I was laying out a doorway and I have a king stud, is I slide it over until this is lined up, I mark again, mark again. King stud, trimmer, or jack stud. What that has done is given me, I'm using two by lumber, which is inch and a half uh, wide. Let's see it, let me show you that. That's this. I don't have to pull out a tape. All I have to do is slide over and scribe. The Martinez is similar. I have three quarters, one inch, and inch and a half. See, it's labeled in, uh, inch and a half, one, and then three quarters of an inch. So same thing. I mark, I align on that side, slide over, and I align on that side. King stud, trimmer, or jack stud. Now let's say I didn't have that and I mark. I would mark that. I always burn an inch, mark inch and a half, inch and a half. Now I have to slide. See how many more moves that was? And more potential for error. All of these indentations are called scribe marks, and they're set in eighth inch increments. So I'm just gonna scribe, actually let's do this. So scribe. Now all of these indentations are called scribe marks, and they're offset by one eighth of an inch on both squares. Let me show you how that works. Two inches and I want to scribe. Now I have exactly two inches. If I want two and an eighth, I go to this one. Now I have an eighth of an inch difference. If I want inch and seven eighths, so on and so forth. This is what it looks like with the Swanson square. Let's just go two and a half. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm putting in the lead of my Pika Dry right here and I'm scribing. Very little pressure, no pressure on this except down and then this one is what I'm gonna move with, two and a half. Okay, if I wanna go two and uh, five eighths, see there's an eighth. If I wanna go two and three quarters, you get the point, so on and so forth. Those are called scribe marks. When I started, we didn't have scribe marks on the old squares. So we learned to do this. I want four and a half. I see I'm putting my pencil and I usually angle it so I can see it's at four and a half. I'm putting pressure on the square because I don't want it to do any of this. Four and a half. And now I'm just gonna, with this hand, I'm just gonna slide it my way. And we got real accurate. So those are all eighth of an inch too, right? Okay, super easy. Now, here's something that most beginners will use a square for. They're going to use a square to make perfectly square cuts without marking. So they're gonna do one of these. Okay. Notice that when I did that, I put the square here and I'm holding pressure and I'm holding it clamped. 
it can't move. Then I just use it as a guide. I never do that. However, however, sometimes if I don't have a measurement, but I know I have a 45 degree cut, then I will do that. Remember this is 45. So 45 plus 45 is 90 plus 90. That gives us our 180 degrees in a triangle. Okay, like I said, very rare that I do that. If I need to mark, that's what I do for 45. And I come in here like this. Perfect. Wait, how do we know it's perfect? Boom. Okay, now here's what you're gonna do if you're experienced. I'm gonna go 90 and 7 sixteenths, half, or tick 1 16th less. And I'm not gonna scribe a mark. Instead, I'm gonna come in here like this. I'm gonna eyeball that this is square and that that's parallel. You see that was right through that tick mark. Look at that. Perfect, that's within a 30 second. Plenty good for framing. You don't need, what is the 30 second? If your eyesight's that good, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about rafters for a minute. Okay, so let me show you how you mark a plumb cut for a rafter using your square. Remember we have this pivot point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line. I'm 90 degrees and let's say I want a 712 pitch. That's the pitch I'm framing. That's what my plumb cut, this rafter needs to meet the ridge and since it's coming up at an angle, it's gonna be that 712. I'm gonna rotate it until we're right at the seven along the same edge as the pivot point. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. Notice that the seven corresponds to about 30 degrees, okay? So a seven inch pitch is 30.26 degrees. So keep that in mind. So once we have the, the pitch of the roof, that means for every 12 inches that we go over, we're going up seven. That's where the roof pitch comes from here in the US. I mean, that's, I mean elsewhere as well, but that's, that's how we read off pitches, okay? That's about 30 degrees, 30.26. So how do I figure out, I know that this is a right triangle. So that's 90, I have 30.26. How do I figure out the other angle? Well, I could take that, do the math. 90 minus 30.26, 59.74. Okay, or I can put my square back, since I've already marked that, 59. Just, just a little less than 60. Let me show you how to do that with the Martinez. So I mark this, I'm just gonna take a five inch scribe. Okay, so I'm marking, I'm square, I'm gonna rotate until the seven is on top of the board, and I'm gonna mark that angle. Now we have the angles. I already know that this is a little over 30. If I put the square back, boom, 59.74. So that's a way you can do it with no math. So you wanna try one that we don't know? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do a 1012. So again, I'm gonna scribe back. So I'm on my pivot point. I'm gonna look for the 10. I'm gonna rotate the top until it's at 10. That's about 40 degrees. Notice it's just a little under, but 40 is close enough. When I put the square back to where we started, notice that I'm just a little over 50. So let's check the math. 10 inch pitch is 39.81. If I subtract that from 90, that's 50.19. Those together are gonna add up to 90. Just a little, so 50.19, just a little over 50. Now, I'm gonna show you this in practice. I'm gonna go ahead and let's just, let me get another piece of wood. And let's leave it there for part one.
we'll leave that super basic and then we'll get into some of those other things in part two. So thank you very much for following along. If you feel like it, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and tell all of your friends. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, so let's just make it real simple and I'm gonna Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. So I've been thinking, I was talking to Ashley Harwood. I'm gonna tag her in the description below. Go follow her channel, one of my favorite channels. Mostly because I kinda wish that I had gone into wood turning. Anyway, I'm a framer, <laughs> this is just the way it is. So in talking to Ashley, I realized that I should start doing videos that are more along the lines of what are some of those things that I would have loved to have been able to find a video when I first put bags on. So that is the genesis of this video. So what we're gonna cover is how to use a speed square. There's nothing really trick. We're gonna start super basic and then we're gonna go up to some features that maybe you didn't know about. This is the brand new Swanson speed square. I bought this off Amazon here just a couple weeks ago. The Swanson Speed Square is the speed square that I have used for the last 20 something years. Until about three, three years ago when I got the Martinez Titanium Square. Now I'm gonna get into this toward the end, but I'm gonna show you some of the features of the Martinez Square. And then of course the Swanson. I also have two of the bigger 12 inch. So FYI, Speed Square is Swanson. It's like, we all say it, right? Like rollerblades, but they're, uh, that's a brand name. Also just dated me from the early 90s. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna refer to the Martinez Square as the Martinez Square, Speed Square. We all pretty much just say Speed Square, but anyway, that's, yeah, who cares? This is the Johnson hip valve, or, scribe notch, okay, let's just start over now that we got sunshine. Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you very much, by the way, for watching these videos. Go ahead and just give me a thumbs up at the beginning. This could be the worst video you've ever seen, but you know, why not just start out with a thumbs up? Okay, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go into the basics on a speed square. So I was recently, ta recently talking to Ashley Harwood. I'm gonna put her, that other one sounded so much better. Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're gonna do a back to basics video. So I was talking to Ashley Harwood uh, just a couple weeks ago, and in the course of the conversation, we were talking about like, what are those videos that we wished that we had when we started? Go follow her channel, by the way. She does outstanding teaching and wood turning. Awesome. Maybe in another life, I could have been Ashley Harwood. Nope, can't say that. You can't say that in modern times. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're gonna go all the way back Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're gonna go all the way back to basics. This is a how do I use a speed square video. This is really a train wreck. <laughs> 